Okay, so coming to the Acromancia claims, the first one and the one that might be the most novel is that Acromancia is the only strain that lives in and regulates the gut lining. This sounds fantastic. It's actually incorrect. And pretty quickly, we can pull up, for example, a 2022 study that found 25 species that live in the lining of the gut. And there's even a term for this already, the mucosa-associated microbiome. So that's one claim that I think is pretty easy to set the record straight on. It does live in the lining of the gut. It's definitely not the only species that lives in the lining of the gut. The second claim is that acromancia is a major part of the gut microbiome. I feel this claim to be misleading. And let me give you the data that informs my perspective on this. The total gut microbiome contains one to 5% acromancia. Comparatively, it contains two to 14% of bifidobacteria. Additionally, if we zoom in on the small intestine, which for reasons we've elaborated on ad nauseum in the past, is probably the most important area of the gut since you absorb 90 to 95% of calories there. This is where you have the most opportunity and the most leaky gut that can occur, the most immune activation, the most gut receptors. It's really the most important area of the gut, not to say the other areas are not important, but again, nutrient absorption, immune regulation are predominantly occurring here. So acromancia here represents less than 0.5% of the microbiome. And then comparatively, lactobacillus represents 6% of the small intestinal microbiome. So to say it's a major regulator, maybe, but I think it's a bit of a stretch. And if someone were to hear that claim, they might think, oh, well, if, it, if it's a major regulator, it's got to be better than the other probiotic that I'm currently taking that might contain lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. And when we represent it as such, I, I think it's more correct to say it's a part. I wouldn't say it's a major part. And then another claim here is that acromancia levels being low is associated with poor health. And again, this is misleading. It's really only giving you part of the data set here. Yes, lower levels of acromancia have been associated with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and inflammatory bowel disease. But conversely, higher levels have been associated with irritable bowel syndrome, with Parkinson's, and with multiple sclerosis. So this harkens back to a concept I had written about in Healthy Good, Healthy You years ago, which is we should be careful not to micromanage an ecosystem and not say, well, some healthy populations and cohorts have higher acromancia now we're just going to target acromancia and try to increase it or decrease it. And I think that misses the bigger picture of the ecosystem that is the gut.